What is up, everyone? In this video, we are gonna take a look at a good character, Diona. When I first saw her skill set, I was like, yo, that is the character for me. You know why? Because she is ice and her Q creates this AoE, like a wide area where it does cryo damage. And I main D look, right? So, Diona, not Dio, nah, no road roller stuff. <laughs> She is very interesting because I read her skills and it seemed like she should do no damage. Like, for example, if you look at her talents, normal attack is just normal attack, yeah? So here is her E. And it says, it fires an icy paw that deals cryo damage to opponents and form a shield on hit. Press, rapidly fires off two icy paws, okay? And if you hold, dash just back quickly before firing five icy paws. The shield created by a hold attack will gain a 75% damage absorption bonus. All right. The shield has 250% cryo damage absorption bonus and will cause your active character to become affected by cryo at the end of formation for a short duration. So if you're red, then you can get frozen. And I have her skills at level 1. So press cooldown 6 seconds, holding cooldown 15 seconds for extra 75% shield. And I think it's better if you hold. I'll talk about the reason why hold is better later. And here is her Q. Tosses out a special cold brew that deals AoE cryo damage and creates a drunken mist in an AoE. This is why I thought I would have to work on her. And it says deals continuous cryo damage to opponents within the AoE. That's great for fire because cryo plus fire equals melt and that is times 2 damage. And it says continuously regenerates the HP of characters within the AoE. If you go here at level 1, it says skill damage 80%. Shouldn't really matter because I'm going to be building her with max HP because look at this. HP regeneration over time. She's a healer, right? And if you want her to heal more, you would need to build her with HP. I don't think it's better for you to give her some damage. With my previous experience, those healers, those really nice gears, critical chance, critical damage, attack, no, it wasn't that great. So I'm happy that it looks like if we go for full HP build, we can do a lot of healing. Duration is 12 seconds, cooldown 20 seconds, energy cost 80, that's a lot. Continuous field damage 52.6%. <sighs> this thing. Anyways, moving on to the next talent, it says characters shielded by icy paws have their movement speed increased by 10% and their stamina consumption decreased by 10%. Nice. It seems like you can use it on floor 12 in Abyss as of now. The next talent, it says opponents who enter the AoE of signature mix have 10% decreased attack for 15 seconds. So she's a healer and at the same time, if the enemy is in the signature mix, that means they're gonna do less damage, which is nice. And the last talent says when a perfect cooking is achieved on a dish with restorative effects, there is a 12% chance to obtain double the product. Okay. And let's go over to Constellation. Very first one. Regenerates 15 energy for Diona after the effect of signature mix end. Her signature mix, which is Q, elemental burst skill, costs 80 energy. And this is going to help you spam her Q more often. And like I said, the reason why Cryo AoE is good is because I'm using Diluc. And it also heals you, right? So I would say this is a um, very nice constellation. Let's move on to the second one. It increases Icy Paws damage by 15% and increases its shield damage absorption by 15%. Additionally, when Paws hit their targets, creates a shield for other nearby characters on the field with 50% of the Icy Paws shield damage absorption for 5 seconds. So she can be also good in party, like in co-op. I don't like how it increases damage by 15% because as the talent suggested, we're supposed to build her with a lot of HP. And it says increases its shield damage absorption. Okay, I'll take that. Let's move on. Third constellation is the level increase for Q by 3. Thank you. That's always good. The fourth constellation is says within the radius of signature mix, Diona's charge time for aim shot is reduced by 60%. Wait, how are they wanting us to play her? So with a lot of HP, she's going to do no damage. So the only way you're going to be using this or the reason why this is good is because, I don't know, we're maybe going against electro shield and they want us to take those electro shield down faster. Okay, this is very confusing constellation, but I'll take that. I don't like it though. Fifth one should be to level up the IC paws. Okay, that means more barrier. Let's move on to sixth constellation. It says characters within signature mix radius will gain the following effects based on their HP amounts. It increases incoming healing bonus by 30% when HP falls below or equal to 50%. Okay, so if you do sixth constellation, you'll be healing a little bit more by 30%. That is a lot. And it says elemental mastery increased by 200 when HP is above 50%. I think this is really nice because like the reason why I kind of use sucrose was for her talents. And her talent says she gives that 20% of her 
her element mastery to the other characters. And this one is just 200 flat. In order for Sucrose to beat this, she needs to have 1000 elemental mastery. Oh my god, what the heck? So by having Diona at 6 constellation, it's gonna be the best, of course. If not, then we're gonna have to be comparing her with Bennett, right? Because Bennett heal is per second, whereas Diona Q heal tick is per 2 seconds. So she heals less than Bennett, of course. And we're gonna have to compare the number here. Let's go over her weapon. I personally think Sacrificial Bow is the best because, you know, after using Elemental Skill, the skill has 80%. If you do Refinement Rank 5, of course, if it's 40%, you would make sure that you always want to charge your E so that you want to attack the enemy with more IC paws that there's a higher chance for you to reset the cooldown for E. Okay? And this only can occur once every 16 seconds. And the reason why you want to level this bow is because of the energy recharge. Like I said, spamming her Q is the key to make her broken. And let's move on to her artifacts. Because I'm going to be using her for Q a lot, using her E and swap out to a different character for probably a DPS, I think Noblesse Oblige set is the best on her. And let's take a look at her artifacts. And, um, yeah. Plus zero. I want this at plus 20, but I couldn't find a satisfying piece. So before the new character comes out, I wanted to go over the new characters and then kind of tell you what it's like to have them, whether if it's good to invest into them or not. So there you go. Healing bonus. If you want to do more healing or if you wanted to survive a little bit more, then you can go for max HP, right? That's your choice. But you'll definitely be doing more healing if you have healing bonus on your circlet. Anyways. Let's first bring her to Sparrow Abyss. As you guys have noticed, she gives you Cryo Shield. That means she might be really good in Sparrow Abyss 12. Alright, character normal and charge attack damage 20%. Let's go for this one. Alright, for the team, I have Diluc, Diona, Venti, and Tartalia. I have Diona because I simply thought, you know, her E is going to protect Diluc a lot. So let's go. Diona E... Right. Let's use her Q. Okay, 1.6k healing at level 1. Lemao. Hello. Yona's E should be reset. Feels like if she has her C1, it's gonna be better for her to spam her Q. Okay, let's use Q now. Okay, that radius is a little small. Like your PP. Let's hold and let's get more energy. Alright, so it seems like if you hold your E, you get more energy back. So that's good. That's always good. So, without her C1, she can't really spam her Q right now. But let's give her a constellation and see how it goes. Okay. Alright. So here we are. We're gonna do a constellation. Let's go. Oh, I like this animation. So what you're looking at here is the playstyle, not the damage, okay? Because in Abyss Floors, they kind of rig your damage. Right, Diona Q. She throws it at something. And there is my Q. Okay. It felt a lot faster. It depends on your finger too. Like, last time I forgot to do a lot of Diona E. Yeah. I'll give you that. And there's another Q. What? That's relatively fast. Definitely faster than before. Yeah? I ignore those, you know, ice press. And that missile as well. Alright, so I felt it. 
comparison. Yeah. Side by side. So that was the power of C1. We can move on to the next one. C2. We can't really showcase this. So let me just move on. It's the third one. Alright. That is done. And let's take a look at the talent level. And she heals approximately 1% more. So her skill damage, continuous field damage went up. HP regeneration over time, now it's 6.67%. That means she's going to be healing a bit more, yes. Because 1% over HP is like... <laughs> 189 more healing, nice. And the fourth one says Yona's charge time for aim shot is reduced by 60%. And also this, increases the level of IC pause by 3. Let's do 2, 3, 4, 5 constellation at once. Let's do that. All right. Now it's gonna be 7.2% max HP for base shield, 9%. So the shield just got thicker. All right, there's Diona. Q. All right, there is uh, definitely more healing. I need some ice shield. Alright. Look at this charge. Charge arrow. So much faster. Yeah? You're seeing this? And we're gonna take a look at this sad last sick constellation. This is a pay to win constellation. And 200 element mastery is a lot of bonus for your DPS. So we should be able to absorb some damage, right? It's gonna be more damage. But let me just start doing some damage. The auto aim. That was amazing. Wow. Okay. Okay. I don't think I've seen 140k damage with no proper setup. Okay, we can already see the difference, kind of. Yeah? I'm just looking at this damage and thinking Diona is indeed the best support for d look in my opinion. I don't like how Mihoyo made her to be a pay to win character. I don't like this. Wow. Yeah. So 200 elemental mastery. We have all seen the damage difference and big rift for those of you guys who can't use her as a support that helps you do more damage. Without C6, she's gonna be just applying cryo element to the opponents. She's gonna help you heal a little, but C6 is gonna make her into a different character. From just a C to B tier support to a S tier support. Right now, I'm kind of taking this video and I'm a little sad. If that constellation was in her talent, it would have been really nice. You know how Sucrose talent helps you get more elemental mastery without constellation, right? So that's why I recommended you to use Sucrose if you don't have Venti. But I don't think I can recommend you to use Diona. The reason why I showcased her with this style is because I thought this would be the best way to use her. And of course, there's going to be people with good gears and give her some nice weapon and nice artifacts and be like, Yo, Diona can do like 3 or 4k damage per hit. I can do it too. And I don't think that's the best way to use Diona. You want to make use of her healing. That's why Bennett is really good. Bennett helps you do more damage, also heals. I wanted to use Diona like that too. But, I mean, whatever floats your boat, man. If you want to build Diona just like Jean, then go ahead. But I would say Diona with Noblesse Set with HP percentage is the best one. And Weapon, Sacrificial Bow. There were some questions about people asking me, Oh, so Diona better or Barbara? It's the support. You go by the element, not by the ability. 
So like how I explained about why Diona is the best one for D Luke, we can see how it goes in floor 10. Do you guys get the idea? For child, I could have used Bennett Q and child Q right away. For D Luke, I can use Diona Q and D Luke Q right away. So, yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And leave a comment on what you think about her. All right. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys later. Adios.